In this video, I'm going to explain the three things that you need to do for easy, fast entry into Bali when you come here. I'll put chapters below so that you can jump to each one and see how it's completed. But this year was the first year in 12 years where nothing's gone wrong. It's all been completed before we came away, so there was no messing around once we landed at Bali Airport. Watch the video, it makes things so simple. No messing around, you land, you're through immigration, you're through customs, and you're on to your holiday. So after coming out to Bali for the last 12 years, I've always found that once you've landed at Bali Airport, it's so time consuming. Getting a visa at the desk when you land at immigration, uh, going through customs and now there's the added complication of the Bali tourism tax. Well this time I decided to do everything online and it made life so much easier. Bali's got their act together and the three things that you need to get, you need to get your Bali visa, you need to get your tourism tax paid and you need your customs QR code. All of those things can easily be done online before you land. And honestly, it only took about 10 minutes to get through immigration and out of the airport. It actually took a little bit longer because we had to wait for the luggage coming off the carousel, which did add time to it. But immigration, getting through the biometrics there, getting through customs, uh, and obviously already having paid the tourism tax. What a breeze. Right, let's go through those three things that you need to do before you come away to make entry easy. So the first thing you need to do is get a visa to get into Bali. Now there's two ways of going about this. You can either land in Bali and get what they call a visa on arrival, uh, where you get to immigration and you basically apply for a visa there and then. You're always given it, you've got to pay for it at the desk, but it's extremely time consuming. And what you've got to remember are, there are hundreds of other holiday makers that are all doing the same. The second and much easier way of doing it is to apply for an online visa. And the huge benefit of getting the online visa is the visa is only for 30 days. If you want to extend it for a maximum of 60 days, so one extension, what that means is you can do it online. So you're not having to go to an immigration office in the country, queue up again, fill out paperwork, pay for it there and then go away. You can just log in online. You've already got your original visa and all you need to do is extend it for an, an extra 30 days. So, so easy. So we'll look at doing that. First thing that you need to do is go to the site that I've listed below. And if you haven't already registered, then up in the top right hand corner, you've got your sign in and that will take you to this login page. Now, if you haven't already created an account, then pop down to the bottom right hand corner there and create an account. Make sure that you've got your email correct because any information will be sent to that email address. Once you've created your account over on the left hand side, you've got your apply button. So if you click on there, that takes you to your section where you actually choose which visa you want. And if you're just going for a holiday, then you want your 30 day visa. So I've already got United Kingdom in there. And then we need to choose the purpose of visit. And the one that you click on is general family or social. The next one is choose the purpose of your visit. So the one you do there is tourism, family visit and transit. Now for the type of visa, you want the B1 tourist, which is the visa on arrival. However, it's not on arrival. We're getting it beforehand. At this point, you've only got the option of 30 days, but later on, we'll look at extending it for another 30 days. So that's the one that we're going to apply for. So click on apply. And before we move on, some things to take into account. So it is a 30 day visa that we're applying for. It's going to cost around about 25 pounds or 500,000 rupee. The visa covers tourism only. And when you land, your passport's got to be valid for at least six months. And you're also going to need for this an outbound ticket from Indonesia. And the last thing to take into account is this is only going to be valid for 90 days. So you may as well apply two or three weeks before you go. Click apply. And that brings you to this page where we're going to upload a picture of the passport and also a picture of your upper body. Now you need a JPEG of your passport and you need a JPEG of your upper body, but you're also going to need a PDF of your passport and you're going to need a PDF of your outbound ticket. Click on upload next to the passport and upload the picture of your passport and then click on upload next to the photo and upload that then click on next. Now we're not paying at this point, but we do have to input some information. So full name, male or female, place of birth, uh, your date of birth and phone number. Anything with a red asterisk is a requirement. And if we scroll down, you choose your document type. So passport, passport number, what nationality you are, the date of expiry on the passport, remembering that you need to have at least six months from the day that you land on your passport. 
and where the document was issued. The next bit's a little bit more difficult. You need to say where you're staying in Bali, whether that's a hotel, a villa, or with somebody. Now, don't worry if you're staying in quite a few locations. We stayed in six the last time we were there a month ago. So I just chose one and put the details in. The address that I chose was the Sofitel in Nusa Dua. Just copy and paste the address. But the thing that got me on this was where the province, city and district was. I couldn't fill any of that in. But if you get the postcode, which is the five digit number, if you put that into where the postcode is, the rest of it populates. And then the last bit on this page is to upload the PDF. And that's the PDF of the passport and the PDF of the return ticket or the outbound ticket and then press next. And that takes you to the check page. And basically you're just going to go down the right hand side and check that all the information that you've put in is correct and put a tick in the box. Click the declaration box at the bottom left hand side and then save. It then asks you, sure you want to continue the application? Click yes. You can see the status here. So it's saying waiting for payment. Click on detail to pay. It goes through all the information that you've already put in. It tells you how much it is, which is 500,000 rupee, which is 25 pounds roughly. Uh, it tells me that I've got nearly eight hours to be able to pay it and you just click on payment down in the bottom left. It's actually just over 500,000 rupee because you've got to pay a pound to, uh, to process it online. Put all your card details in and then press pay now. Once you've been through the payment process, you'll get sent an email which looks like this. And if you click on view back, it takes you back to this. Now, a couple of things to take into account. Instead of saying waiting for payment, it'll say payment made. Also, if there's more than you going, you can do all of the applications under that one email address. And that will mean that for every application that you do, it will show up on here. So there were four on here when we did ours. And once you have paid and you're back in this screen, you can actually view the visa there and then and just print it off and have it in your luggage. And this is what mine looked like. Although I printed a copy off, I never needed to use it because the immigration officer already had this on his screen when I got to the desk. And that's how easy it is to apply and get the B1 visa to enter Bali for 30 days. If you need to extend it, we'll show you how to do that at the end of the video. But just make sure you've got the JPEGs and the PDFs of the documentation so that you can just go right through the application process. The second thing that you've got to do is your customs declaration. Again, nice and easy, do it online and do it before you go away. Uh, I recommend that you do it on your phone because the QR code shows up so much better on the screen and you don't have to print it off, but you can print it off if you want to do. And we'll look at that. Really easy to do the customs declaration. As I said, I did it on the phone just because I found it easier to do a screenshot of it. But you can also go to the PC website and download a copy and print it off. Again, I'll put the link below, but if you want to do a search, just pop in Bali Customs Declaration and you're looking for B Kuka, which is the official website of the directorate, but other Bali websites will point you to it. This is the page that it takes you to and you just need to put your name in, email, passport number, nationality, date of birth, what your occupation is, where you're staying, all really straightforward. You need to put in Bali Airport as your place of arrival and also the flight number and date of arrival, the number of carry-on luggage and the number of accompanied luggage in the hold. And then if you're taking anybody with you, you just put the number of um, additional passengers, so you plus one, plus two, plus three, and then you fill in the details for each one of those. So again, full name, passport number, nationality, and what relationship they are to you. And then all you do is press add, and it populates underneath. And then just like filling a card in on the plane, you agree or disagree to all the prompts that it gives you. This page is just for your mobile phone and your IMEI number. Um, obviously, you don't need to do this if you're just there for 30 to 60 days. And then tick to say that it's your declaration and that is your QR code that you show to the customs as you're going through. Again, so simple, especially if you do it before you go. You can do it in the airport if you forget, but if you do it before you go, it's a breeze. Um, and just in addition, if you make any mistakes, you can do this as many times as you want. And the third and final thing that you've got to do is your tourism tax. Again, do this online. I think it was about £7.50 or something like that per person. Completed in minutes. Let's look at that. Again, link below takes you to this page tells you how much it is, 150,000. 
and you can click on the currency and it'll tell you what the uh, what the amount is in the currency that you've chosen and then click on pay tourist levy it'll take you to the tourist levy form and on the right hand side you'll see where you put your name in you put your email in again passport number and what date you're arriving make sure that on the left hand side you've chosen the payment method that you want to use then click submit go through the payment process and it's as simple as that and then this is the levy voucher that you get again print this off and take it with you we weren't asked for it but we weren't asked for anything while we were out there but better to be safe than sorry At this point, we were four days away from two of the visas expiring. So I went to one of the emails that I'd received, clicked on batch and came to this page, which shows in real time where all the visas are at. Clicked on one of the ones that I wanted to extend and then to the right hand side, clicked on actions and extend drop down. After clicking on that, it took me to this page. So extend was already populated. Choose the duration which is 30 days. It shows the purpose of the extension, so you just click on detail and apply. Again, all the stipulations of the visa come up. Click on apply. All the information is still in there from the original application, so you just check everything to make sure that it's okay. And at the bottom, again, click on next. Go through everything, just make sure that the date is correct. And at the bottom, click on I accept. Check everything with the check boxes again. And at the bottom, it gives the cost. So again, £25 or 500,000 rupee. Gives you how long you've got to pay. Click on payment, fill in all the details. You get confirmation back by email saying that everything's been successful. And that's it. An extended visa, 30 days, literally minutes to do. And there's confirmation. Okay then, so in summary, well, Bali is a beautiful island to come to. Uh, we tend not to do hotels anymore. We get villas like this one. Uh, there's links into villas that we've stayed at if you want to see some of those. But this year has definitely been the easiest we've ever had when we've arrived in Bali. The uh, online visa application, perfect. The extension of two of those visas, so easy. The customs declaration, it was all on my phone. Once I got the luggage, we just went straight through customs, no hassle. And then the third thing, obviously, the tourism tax. All those done online before we got here, through in no time. Because the visa application had already been done before we got here, we could use the biometrics that have just been installed in the airport. So no queuing up at the normal desk. You just simply go through the biometrics, passport out in the, look at the camera, and then you're through. It really has been the easiest arrival at, at Bali that we've ever had. And it's something that I'll carry on doing. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this video was primarily because of the online visa application and the worry that I had over extending the visa. Uh, but you've seen how easy that was to do. So, yeah, follow those steps. The three things, the online visa, customs declaration and the tourist tax and you're in. Have a great holiday.